Okay, let's, uh, let's take a quick poll here. What's a socially acceptable number of pairs of golf shoes to have? Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Is that too many? Uh, this is only like half of the golf shoes I have, but fortunately for you, I've worn them all so that you don't have to. That's what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about the best golf shoes currently on the market. We're gonna talk about the best value, the best overall, the best hybrid, the best barefoot shoe. No matter what type of golf shoe you are looking for, we're going to have you covered, and that's what we're talking about today. So if you're buying a new pair of shoes coming up, then keep watching this video. I think you're gonna find it super helpful. My name is Sean Ogle, I'm the founder of this thing here, Breaking 80, where we do golf product reviews and golf course reviews. I've been doing it for over a decade, but we've only been doing videos like this for a few months now. So if you've got some value out of it, by the end of the video, don't have to do it now, but by the end of the video, if you've got some value out of it, maybe uh, hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, do all the things, and uh, we can go from there. I also feel like it's worth mentioning, I have dedicated reviews for almost all of these pairs of shoes. So I'll link to all those below. You can go to breaking80.com and you can learn more about each of these shoes. There's a, uh, we've got a lot to cover. So I'm gonna try and do a brief overview, but if you wanna drill down and find out more about all these shoes, you can find it on breaking80.com. Let's come right out of the gate with a very popular category, and that is the best golf shoe under $100. My best pick, there's actually two we're gonna talk about, but my best pick for most people, if you're looking for a golf shoe under 100 bucks, is the Nike Roshi G. You can see a photo of it here. I don't have it with me because it is currently sitting in my golf locker. Uh, this is one of the most comfortable shoes you're gonna find. It's very versatile, and you can use it in a lot of different conditions. It's not going to be the most stable, it's not going to be the most waterproof, but it will be one of the most comfortable comfortable, and you can use this shoe for 85% of your rounds. No, you're probably not going to want to do it in the pouring rain. You could probably use a little bit more stability than that, but for a value golf shoe that's extremely comfortable, that has the Nike name brand and Nike quality, that is a pretty killer deal, and I highly recommend it. If you're looking for another shoe under 100 bucks, I would recommend the FootJoy Flex. This is the 2019 model. The newest models look a little bit different than this, but I've probably put 40 rounds in this shoe, and I still continue to wear it. You look at the bottom of it, you might say, you know what, this doesn't necessarily feel like it's going to provide the traction that I need, but I don't think I have ever once had a significant slip in this shoe, even in early morning rounds where there's a little bit of dew on the ground. It really is a high quality shoe that's super comfortable, that's going to work in a lot of conditions, and it's not going to break the bank either. Okay, next up, let's do best hybrid shoe. Now, hybrid is a very broad term in the golf world, but the way I look at a hybrid shoe is, what's a shoe if you only wanted to take one pair of shoes on a golf trip? So you need it to be able to walk around town, you need to be able to use it on the golf course, and it needs to kind of blend in and not look like a golf shoe. And so for me, that would be the True Linkswear Lux Sport. This is a shoe that just kind of blends in. You can kind of do anything with it, and the best part is, it's remarkably comfortable. I wore this for the first time on a trip down to Reynolds Lake Oconee, which by the way, highly recommend that place. So I took a little bit of a shot in the dark. I brought these, had never worn them before. I had a backup pair and was kind of expecting to wear the backup pair more. Figured I might need to break this in a little bit more. Uh, from the beginning, didn't have to break them in at all. Super comfortable. Wore them for every round and I've worn them for like 15 rounds since then. I have the taupe beige colorway, which you might love, you might hate, but it does a really good job if you're trying to wear it around town or something and not have it look like a golf shoe. These are a little bit more on the spendy side at 175 bucks, but if you've never worn a pair of True Link Square shoes before, uh, they're great. Your feet will thank you. They're very comfortable. They have a variety of very interesting models, uh, and this is honestly one of my favorites. All right, so since we're talking about True Link Square, let's just keep it going. We've got two pairs of them on this list, and the second is the True Link Square OG feel. So this is our best barefoot golf shoe. So if you're one of those people, you wear the like Vibram, like five finger shoes when you run, you know, those look kind of funny. But the good news is these don't look funny and still give you a similar vibe. So if you want the most natural feeling shoe, if you want it to be as close to playing barefoot golf as possible while still being very comfortable and protecting your feet, then this is the shoe for you. Honestly, of all the shoes here, this might be my favorite looking shoe. It's got the subtle camo, 
It's got the purple on the tips here. It's got some like subtle accents that just make the shoe look really, really cool. I wore these for the first time when I was playing Pumpkin Ridge right after the Live Tournament. We'll save that whole discussion for something else, but we were playing from the tips. We were playing 7,600 yards, which is about 600 yards farther than I've ever played before. Walked the whole thing, wore these for the first time, and I was honestly amazed at just how comfortable my feet were at the end of it. Like you definitely feel it a little bit more when you're walking on pavement as opposed to walking on grass. They're not as padded as your traditional golf shoe, but it does provide a really cool, unique feeling with the idea of kind of barefoot golf. So if that's something you're into, then uh, this is going to be my best recommendation for a barefoot golf shoe. Okay, so how about the most stable golf shoe? Maybe you're a little unsteady. Maybe you like to swing out of your shoes. You need a pair of shoes that is going to be as absolutely rock solid, stable as possible. And for that, we're going with the, basically the one that markets itself as the most stable golf shoe, the Squares. Now, love it or hate it, the Square shoe, in my experience, has lived up to its reputation as being incredibly stable. A lot of the shoes we're talking about today are spikeless. They're more of kind of that hybrid model. These are more like a traditional tour shoe. When you put them on, you feel planted. You don't have quite as much flexibility. They, at first, aren't quite as comfortable because you do have to break them in a little bit more. You know, the leather, the sides, it's definitely thicker, it's firmer, and is going to require a little bit of time to break in. But I will say, of all the shoes we talked about here, I felt the most firmly planted in these compared to anything else. And so if you're someone who often plays in inclement conditions or you've had some injuries and you just want to know that your feet are going to stay firmly planted on the ground when you want them to be, uh, Squares is probably the way to go. Love or hate the looks. I actually think they look okay, but I'm not gonna lie. I did get some crap from uh, my playing partners the few times that I wore them on the course to review. So take that for what it's worth. Okay, so we just talked about the most stable tour shoe. What's the best overall traditional spiked golf shoe on the market? Well, in my opinion, it is this, the Echo Biome G. Five. So when you think of Echo shoes, you generally think of spikeless shoes. They were kind of the ones that invented the spikeless golf shoe. Well, with the new G5, you're getting the best of both worlds. Parts of the sole are similar to what you're going to see in their spikeless hybrid models, but then they also have traditional spikes. This one has the boa laces, which you may love, you may hate, but it truly allows you to kind of get that perfect fit and you don't have to worry about your shoes coming untied all the time. Uh, Echo shoes aren't cheap. This shoe is over $200, but I love what they've been doing with the look. I think the latest Echo shoes to come out are some of the best looking shoes they have ever created. And this is a pair of shoes that is going to last you a very long time to come. So these are the newest ones. We actually haven't even written the review about this on Breaking 80, but I am a huge fan. And Echo continues to be one of, if not my favorite, golf shoe manufacturer. Every single thing I've ever worn, I've ever reviewed from them has been unbelievable, and they continue to last. I've had three pairs of Biomes. I've had the Biome 2, the Biome 3, and the Biome C4s, and I still sometimes wear the Biome 2s that at this point are like five or six years old. Uh, so they've got some longevity to them. They're very, very quality. They're very, very comfortable, and they do have a price tag to go along with it. But seeing this, this is the first pair of spiked Echo shoes I've owned. I've been incredibly impressed, and I can't recommend them enough. Okay, we have two pairs of shoes left, and these are two of my favorite golf shoes of the year for very different reasons. So let's talk about the best value golf shoe, and that is the Painter X003. I'm not gonna lie. Two months ago, I had never heard of Painter, and I got a pair of these to review, and I didn't have super high expectations. I feel like when I normally review kind of the first iteration of a golf shoe or a new apparel company, it's just kind of like, okay, you need a little bit more time. You need a couple years to you know refine it, to hone it in, and so I wasn't sure what to make of these. They are fantastic. So the first time I wore them, I wore them through a three-day tournament out at Pronghorn, and honestly, again, expected to wear them one round and wore them all three rounds and was continually blown away. Not only that, I had at least six people come up to me and ask, are those the new painters? What do you think? They look great. What are your thoughts on them? And I was just kind of like, why am I the only one that hadn't heard of these? But they are incredibly comfortable. I've only got two complaints with them. One, when you wear them inside a clubhouse and you're on kind of slick floors, they tend to squeak a little bit. And the other is the toe box can tend to get a little bit creased. So if you're one of those people that wears like Jordans and you're like really concerned about the toe box, this one I have found, especially if you are walking a lot in them, um, it's going to get a little bit creased, but that just gives it that warm look. But 
Why do I say these are the best value? Because first off, you can go to their sales page and they built a ton of tech into this. So it kind of sounds like marketing speak, but they have really engineered these shoes to have a ton of tech, to be very comfortable, and to be very playable on the golf course. And you're getting all of this, you're getting a shoe that looks great, that's incredibly comfortable, and has all the tech, and it's only $140. And that's still a lot of money. You can get a pair of those Nike Roshi G's for like 80 bucks if you look closely. But most of the shoes we have talked about here are quite a bit more than this. 175, 200, 230 even for some of the Echoes. And uh, so at $140, I think you are getting a ton of golf shoe. And this is a shoe that you can wear for almost all of your rounds. I might not wear it in super wet weather, but it's waterproof, it's comfortable, it's stable. And uh, it's got kind of that cool factor because not everybody knows what it is. It's still a brand new brand. So definitely a fan of Painter. I'm excited to check out some of their other models because this is, as it currently sits, this is their lowest model shoe. They've got some more expensive ones, but honestly, this one is so great. Like I can't imagine the higher end models. I can't imagine what those are like, and I'm excited to check them out. Finally, best overall golf shoe. And I'm going to go on record and say, this is my favorite golf shoe of all time. All the ones we talked about, I love, they're great, I wear them all. But in 2022, there is no shoe that I have worn more than this, the Echo Biome C4. And you can tell because it's pretty dirty. This thing's gotten some use. This is the most comfortable golf shoe I have ever worn. It is fantastic. You put it on and it feels like your feet are on clouds. But not only that, it's fully waterproof. It's fully stable. I have never slipped once in the shoe, despite the fact it is a spikeless model. Now, I haven't gone out and played in super wet weather with it, but I've had some early morning dew covered rounds, some light rain, and this thing has just continued to perform. Echo with all of their hybrid models, the Hybrid 2, the Hybrid 3, and now in the C4, they've just continued to get better. And I personally think that each one continues to look better and better. I am really digging the way this shoe looks. It may not be quite as sleek and sexy as like the True Linkswear OG feel, but uh, I really like this. And not only, this is kind of one of the ways you can tell Echo is such high quality. You feel the yak leather, I think is what it is. Um, it's just softer than like any other golf shoe you will find. Um, and so it will get a little worn, it will get a little bit dirty. Uh, you can definitely, you know, use some soap and water and clean it up really easily. I just didn't do it. Should have probably done that before this video, but it's neither here nor there. It's not a cheap shoe. It's 230 bucks. But like I said, I am still occasionally wearing my hybrid twos. I'm wearing on a fairly regular basis my hybrid threes, and this is my go-to for most of my rounds these days. That's how good it is. This is a shoe that will last you for dozens and dozens of rounds and years to come. So it's an investment, but if you are looking for what is, in my opinion, the very best golf shoe on the market that provides the best all-around experience, you're looking at it with the Echo Biome C4. So there you go, those are my favorite golf shoes currently on the market. No matter which of these shoes you go for, you are making a good choice. It's all about figuring out what is going to be the right shoe for you. Some of these you're not gonna be able to wear for every single rounds, and others are going to be a workhorse that you can wear through any conditions on any course under any situation. I will link below our Breaking 80 Best Golf Shoes post so you can get more information on all of these shoes we talked about today, as well as a few others. And if you wanna get even more details, then we've also got links to all of the dedicated reviews for each of these shoes as well, so you can learn more about the pros and the cons of each of them. My name's Sean Ogle. Thank you so much for making it this far. If you got this far, then hopefully that means you got some value out of it, so maybe consider the, the thumbs up, and if you don't mind, subscribe. You get all of our best new videos, all of our golf reviews, all of our golf travel videos. Uh, I'd like to think we put out some pretty good stuff here, so hopefully you think so as well. If you're trying to figure out what to watch next, I highly recommend you go take a look at this video right here, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Peace.